Sebastian, great to have you with us. A hugely exciting sector, um, the one that you operate in. Tell us first off how the adoption of Buy Now, Pay Later is going. Well, it's doing uh, quite amazingly at the current state, right? We're seeing, uh, we're now at 18 million users in the US, growing a million users per month. We're seeing 14 million users in the UK, growing 700,000, 50,000 a month. And in general, Klon has now 90 million users. And I think it's really exciting because people should have less credit cards and more debit cards and use services as buy now, pay later when they need credit. Uh, but otherwise, they should stick to debit. So we think it's a good, good development for Klarna, but also the good development for society in general. Some worry that you make it too easy for shoppers to buy things that they can't afford. Are you concerned that regulators could crack down on this practice, which I would imagine is a pretty big threat to your business model? Not really. I think that, like, look, it, it, you know, there are obviously some people that believe that credit shouldn't be available at all. But if you belong to the majority that thinks credit is uh, helpful and it's good for society when being used properly, it's more a question of what kind of credit should people be using. And when you shop online, as an example, with your debit card, you might be worried that you're going to do a return and you have to wait three weeks for your money or what if I don't get the product that I'm looking at and so forth. So credit actually solves a number of really s solid issues for the consumer. The question is, what credit should I be using? And I think when you evaluate that, you have to look at cost. You have to look at how tricky is that credit? Is it trying to trick you into debt? Is it, you know, what, how long is it encouraging you to pay off? If you compare a credit card, there's a lot of tricky, nasty tricks going on, like revolve, pay less, do this, roll over for an eternity, uh, what we call revolving credit, and they charge you up to 56% APR. Buy now, pay later is no interest, no late fees in the UK as an example, and then also uh, we actually ask you to pay down uh, during a short period of time so that you don't roll it over forever. So I think as regulators see this and realize, okay, there are different forms of credit, which one are better for consumers, it becomes very evident that the form of credit we supply is much better and accordingly should be regulated, but should be regulated proportionally because we want to have freedom of consumer movement. We want consumers to be able to choose the product that is the best and make that one the most available, the one that is the best for the consumer. Sebastian, just before you joined me, uh, I had a chance to speak to the head of European Bank Research at Morgan Stanley, timely conversation, and I asked her about how the European banking giants are thinking about this space. And, um, you know, her view is that they want to get more active in payments. Barclays, for example, has made pretty clear that that's the strategic direction they're going in. Um, will banks be able to compete more effectively in your space moving forward? And how do you think about that competitive landscape? No, I think it's expected. I mean, look, I, I was, I've been doing this for 16 years, right? So I remember the early days of e-commerce when, you know, we were talking to investors and they were telling people are never going to shop clothing online. And now, you know, we've seen a massive transformation in the retail space. And now it's coming to retail banking. This is going to be a massive shift. And we're starting to see the true momentum happening with companies like Klarna, Revolut, Monzo, uh, Chime, etc. And obviously the incumbents are getting nervous. That's not very odd considering the situation. But what I do think is, uh, you know, where we benefit a lot is we're fully regulated as a bank. We have a modern tech, tech stack. We don't sit with a lot of legacy. And we don't have a broken business model where we've been overcharging consumers' fees in an inappropriate way and been tricking them with insurance and this and that and all these type of different dirty tricks that a credit card companies have been using on the consumers to charge them more than they really should pay for these services. So I think as much as the incumbents will try, obviously, to reinvent their businesses to try to do that, I feel very comfortable that the, the new, the challengers like ourselves, has the best opportunities to really be successful and hopefully be participating in making this market that is too large. I mean, credit cards is a $6 trillion industry. You know, that's... Economist was writing the other day that you know the cost of banks is three hundred fifty dollars per person on the planet. That has to shrink, and Clara wants to contribute to shrink that. But we obviously, for our shareholders, hope to be able to gain a larger piece of a smaller pie in the future. And, and uh, I, I, I'm not surprised that they're interested, but I think it's uh, you know it's a little bit late to wake up now.